So you want to learn about phishing. Today, we will show you how it works with Evil Jinx. This demo is meant for educational purposes only. Please do not test anything that you do not have permission to test or send emails to anybody that you don't have permission to send emails to. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Just a couple quick notes. So firstly, this is our local installation on Windows. So that means that it won't work if you send it to somebody else on the internet because it's only on your machine. Then secondly, the reason why it's a local installation and we chose that for the demo is because it allows us to edit fishlets quickly. So it's great for like building fishlets and, and configuring them and editing them because you can just quit the Evil Jinx instance and then reload it with your new fishlet and see how it works. Some of the things used in this demo include VS Code is the editor that we use, but you can use any editor that you need to edit the YAML files. But you have to have Go in order to build the Evil Jinx project. And you can get that project from Git you can have git on your windows to either clone the repo or you can download the source zip file guys if you're struggling to break into cybersecurity or just with topics in general things not working something's not running correctly or anything like that then we recommend joining our private membership it'll be the first link in the description and what you get is live weekly calls with clinton and myself where we discuss topics on internal external web apis cloud whatever you want to learn as well as CV tips, LinkedIn resumes, like how to build out your LinkedIn, that sort of thing, so that we can get you working in the cybersecurity industry. If that sounds interesting, it'll be the first link in the description. Now let's get into the demo. Okay, so firstly, we wanna go and check that Go is installed on our Windows machine, and then Git is installed as well. So they both are, and now we're gonna Git clone the Evil Jinx repo, so just Git clone HTTPS, double forward slash github.com forward slash K Gretzky, and then the Evil Jinx repo. And then it's still named Evil Jinx 2, even though this will be Evil Jinx 3 when you see the banner load up. So that's cloned now. So let's CD into that directory, change directory into that directory. And then once we're in there, we want to run the build run.bat file, which will then build the Evil Jinx installation. So you'll get prompted for a UAC, and then you can just click accept on that so that you just give it administrative privileges to install. And then once the Evil Jinx portal loads up, we're going to configure the IPv4 to our local host, which is just 127001. And then we're going to configure the domain to some arbitrary domain. So we're going to call that Clint and Sai for a hyphen evil.com. Cool. And then the next thing you want to do is import the certificate authority so that your browser doesn't shout at you and say it has a certificate of contrast. So you just want to install that and then click current user for the store location and then place all certificates in the following store and then click the trusted root certificate authorities there and then install that. Cool, then the pop-up will come up. The import was successful, which is what we're looking for. And then let's hop into VS Code, uh, the Evil Jinx repo and then fishlets, new fishlet. And then we're going to call this office365.yaml. So fishlets are YAML files. And this is the fishlet that I'm using now, which is one I just got off GitHub. So you can find all of the fishlets that you want on GitHub, but it's trial and error trying to get them to work. So that is the art of it. You can obviously make them yourself as well if you understand the mechanics behind them, which I do recommend. So once we've got the fishlet, let's go back into the Evil Jinx console. And you want to quit the instance and run it again because it needs to refresh the fishlets and then it will load your Office 365 fishlet in there. Cool, so then it's reloaded now. Okay, awesome. So the Office 365 fishlet is loaded, but it's got a disabled status. So let's type in fishlets and then host name, <clears throat> Office 365, Clint and evil.com. So that's just going to attach the fishlet to that domain that we've just given it now. And then fishlets enable Office 365 to enable the fishlet. Cool, so now it's enabled. So now we just need to get the subdomains of what the fishlet requires. So to do that, you just go fishlets, get hosts, and then Office 365. As you can see, it needs login and www. So we're going to put that in our Etsy host file on Windows. So just whip that open. And then as you can see, I do have a few of those domains in the Etsy host file already. And I do have the login and www.clintandsa in there already. So that's all good. But if you don't have them, you should paste them in there so that it can resolve the DNS. Awesome stuff. So now we're going to create the lures. So to do that, we're going to type in lures, create. 
and then Office 365, the name of the fishlet, okay? And then Lua's get URL. And then you're gonna give it an, the ID of the Lua that you just created. So this one is 21, cool. And now open a incognito browser or any browser. So this link is the link that you would use to send to your targets. So you would send it in an email or however you wanna deliver it. Obviously, I'm not gonna go into that now for ethical reasons. But anyway, let's say that the user now clicks on the link and gets sent to the Microsoft login page. As you can see, it's now loading up and in the background, Evil Jinx is doing all of its special magic there. Cool, so now it's a sign in. So what I wanna show you firstly is that this fishlet only works with company accounts. So like if tesla.com was a Microsoft 365 house, then it would work. But as you can see, we just put it in an Outlook email and it broke the fishlet. So let's go back and I'll put in an actual company email there. So it's just reloading again. <clears throat> cool. So we're going to put in one now with a, a mark that is a Microsoft house and is a Microsoft company. So click next. And as you can see, it now asks for the password. So we don't get that weird redirect your error. Then you're obviously going to enter the password or the victim will enter the password. So the password's entered. Now you get prompted for MFA. So now they have to open the Authenticator app on their phone or wherever their MFA is enabled and type in the MFA number there. As you can see, Evil Jinx there is proxying the traffic. And as you can see now, it's, it's authenticated the user. So then the user clicks yes, whatever. And then they get redirected to the actual Microsoft login dot page. So there we go. And then now we can take a look at what Evil Jinx has captured. So by typing sessions, you can see all of the sessions that it's captured and at the bottom there, 20 and 21 has captured the password and login and there's the cookies. So to now use this, you would use a cookie extension on Google Chrome or whatever browser you use and paste that in there and then you would be able to access that Microsoft account as the victim. What you saw was the proxy stealing the session cookie after MFA. So there's no password cracking involved here, it's just hijacking the authenticated session. Here are some things to help you avoid getting fished. Make sure to check the actual domain in the URL bar. If you see the lock next to it and it's locked and it's good, that just means that HTTPS is enabled and that the traffic is secure. However, the domain itself could still be malicious. After that, if you're using a password manager, password managers don't autofill passwords on lookalike domains. So if you haven't visited that domain before, it's not gonna fill that in. And this is a great early warning. Be wary of links in emails and DMs, especially when it comes with wording like verify now or some kind of call to action. This is a typical like phishing technique where the attacker tries to put you under pressure. So if you want to go and check out something and you see like an email like that, say it's for Microsoft, then go to the Microsoft login page on your browser without going from the link in the email. And that's a great way to check if there's actually anything wrong. Say somebody has gotten the username and password to your account, but you've been smart, you've set up MFA. What happens is the person's gonna try and log in a lot and you'll get a lot of MFA notifications saying like verify this pin, use this number or whatever. Make sure that you don't authorize that and make sure to change your password. Remember, this doesn't break MFA. It simply relays the session and steals your cookie. So if you control the link, you control the login. If you guys learned something today, then you'll probably learn something from watching this video right here. And we'll see you in there. Peace.